Hello again, Edwin Learner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to deviate from my Taurus rising routine, get away from the house rulers momentarily because I want to give little explanation on the house rulers. Now, I believe I did have a video that explained it. I thought it was thoroughly lucid and clear, but I'm going to give I'm going to talk a little more about it, and there's one part I'm going to focus on, and, and basically how the house rulers relate to a specific individual's chart. Well, the first thing I'm going to get with, I'm going to go through signs of the zodiac, and I'm going to clarify. You know, most of you probably know, but just in case if some of you don't, clarify the rulers for these signs. I'm going to go in astrological order. The first sign, Aries. Mars is the ruler, Taurus is Venus, Gemini is Mercury, Cancer is the Moon, the Leo, uh, Leo is Sun, is the Sun, Virgo is Mercury, Libra is Venus, Scorpio, the predominant ruler is Pluto, Mars is like the secondary ruler, I use Pluto as the primary ruler though, and, it, and that's if you look at most texts and most astrological sources, people tell you it's connected with astrology, that Pluto is the, the main ruler, though, but Mars is like the secondary ruler. Sagittarius, Jupiter is the ruler for Sagittarius. Uh, Capricorn is Saturn. Aquarius, Uranus, I'm sorry, Uranus is the primary ruler. Saturn is looked upon as that secondary or esoteric uh, ruler, whatever you want to call it. It's, but Uranus is the main ruler um, based on my studies uh, of Aquarius. And now Pisces, Neptune is the primary ruler. People look at Jupiter as the secondary one. I'm fairly convinced it is almost 100% Neptune. But text, a uh, majority of sources will tell you that Jupiter is the secondary ruler. If you're looking at your chart, I would look mainly at Neptune as far as, um, as, far as Pisces goes. If your rising sign is Pisces, say, and your Neptune is in the seventh house, I would give that more clout as opposed to, say, that Jupiter was in your fourth house. Um, I mean, you could look at the ruler of the first in the four in the fourth in that case as well, but I would put more emphasis on whatever house Neptune is in as opposed to Jupiter. So in that example, the ruler of the first and the seventh, I would put more emphasis on. If you had say Neptune and Virgo in the in the seventh house, I would put more emphasis on that as opposed to the say if you had um, Pisces rising and you had Jupiter in Gemini in the fourth or whatever it would be, Jupiter in the fourth. Uh, you could look at both and look at both delineations, interpretations, but I would look more at the ruler of the first and the seventh for that reason. And the same applies for the other primary rulers of the of the planets that have dual rulership. Now another thing I wanted to expound on is that I've been getting some questions regarding uh, the house rulers and how it, how do they pertain to their chart. Most people do know this, that it's based on whatever signs are on your particular cusp. That's what you're going to look at. If you have cancer on the cusp of the third house and your moon is in the seventh, then the ruler of your third house would be positive in the seventh house in your natal chart. However, uh, there are some people that have, that have inquired and said, well, what about in this, for example, they might say something like, well, Gemini is the natural ruler of the third house, so wouldn't I look to see what house Mercury is in, and that's where the, the ruler of the third house would be? No, because you're talking about the connection with, astro with astrology in general. Yes, Gemini is the natural sign that corresponds with the third house, and Mercury would be the ruling planet in that, but it wouldn't pertain to your individual horoscope. What you do is just look at your own horoscope and look at your positions on, look at the signs on the cusp of your houses. Forget about what the natural sign is on it because that has nothing to do with your own specific chart. Look at your chart 
and look at the signs on them, know the rulers on them, and then that's how you get your understanding of the of uh, the, the house rulers, the in um, I guess you could say the ruler of the houses uh, in what house. So in a particular house, house rulers. So uh, anyway, people, that's basically what I wanted to touch up on. So give people a good fundamental understanding of how they go about looking at their, at, at least knowing what their house rulers are as far as pertaining to their own specific chart. Uh, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for, um, I guess you could say, understanding of house rulers. Stay tuned next time where I'll be continuing my house ruler series. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis on a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone, because a person, astrologically, is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.